Welcome to the Better Together podcast, where we look for ways we can work together to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, we have with us Dr. Harold Koenig. He's no stranger to the Better Together podcast, and hopefully he's no stranger to you. You might have seen him out in the media where he talks about the relationship of health and uh, and religion. And today, he's going to talk to us about his book that he's written with his wife, Miss Sharman. It's called Nothing More Important a book about faith. So, Dr. Koenig, thank you for joining us again today on the Better Together podcast. Thank you, Eddie, for having me on your podcast today. So, I want to ask you, are we made for faith? Are our bodies, is there anything within our bodies that shows us how we're designed? Is there evidence for that in our bodies? Well, there is evidence. There is evidence um, in that our our health is is better if we are connected with God, if we have a strong religious faith, and if we're actively involved within a religious community, and and our lives are better. I mean, you know, it, it does say in the scriptures that Jesus came to make life full, and full means full in, in many different ways, our emotional health, our physical health, our behaviors, and, you know, our social relationships. God wants us to have a full life. That's his design, why Jesus came, so that we could have a not only a full life here, but a full life for all of eternity. So, you know, um, it, 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 I think it provides evidence that, you know, the creator of, of all of us really designed our emotional, our social, our physical, our behavioral, you know, makeup um, to be worshiping of him and to be, mm -hmm following his directions as described within in the scriptures which which document what how he wants us to live and treat others and uh you know have meaning and purpose in life that's great and you know you think about the uh the passage in psalm psalm 139 we're fearfully and wonderfully made and so it makes it sound like even down into our genes we're we're designed in that way there's there's evidence for that isn't there Actually, there is. There is. Uh, there was a research study done back in, uh, I think, 1997 by a a psychiatrist by the name of Kenneth Kendler, K E N D L E R. This was published published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. They had twin. This was a twin study, and it was it was all women, but they had monozygotic or identical twins and fraternal twins. And using a genetic formula, they they were able to actually determine to what extent the person's religious devotion was genetically transmitted versus environmentally, you know, uh, inserted there in the person. And the, what they found in this genetics formula, it's a standard formula that looks at the inheritability of different traits that religious devotion 29% of religious devotion literally comes from our genes and it becomes uh, really expressed during the teen years, teenage years and young adulthood. That's when there is a surge in this the spiritual striving. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of times young people don't know what that is, those feelings, that those spiritual strivings that come up and they they fill it with drugs, with sex, with with another person, with with all of these other things that that don't really fulfill that need because it wasn't designed to be fulfilled by all those different things. That though that genetic predisposition was put in there by God so that that He could fulfill those needs to make us complete and whole. So wow. they're they're literally, and this is you know there's literally evidence that uh, that it's in our genes, and that but that we need some direction and guidance for those those spiritual strivings to be fully completed. Those needs to be completely met. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we're going to get into trouble. Absolutely, and so we're genetically designed that way it you alluded earlier how we're really it's better we have better outcomes there's good evidence for that so what are some of the barriers to faith because it seems like 
We hear about the rise of the nuns, people that believe in nothing in particular. Uh, it seems like that's really happened a lot in Western Europe and even some somewhat here in the United States. So what are some of the barriers that get in the way of us really having the kind of faith that we were made to have? Well, you know, science has taken over as kind of the source of truth. And science only can, can study things that are in nature. They, it, it, it can't study things outside of nature. And so a lot of emphasis has been placed on just what you can see, observe, and measure. And, you know, and, and uh, that doesn't, uh, that then has become the source of truth in society. So people... Our, 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 you know, the church used to be the place where people really got truths from, but that's just no longer the case in the Western world, in the, in, uh, you know, in the Middle East, it's still that way, but it's becoming more and more secular as well. So that's a, that's a barrier to faith because if nobody in your area of your support system believes, then, you know, you're not going to have that support to believe. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's part of it. That's a barrier to faith is that other people may not believe the, in God or in Jesus or or any of that. Even family members may not believe. Mm -hmm. And so that's that serves as a barrier to faith. But there are many, many other barriers to faith. I describe in that that book that you just showed, you yes. know, and, you know, health problems can be a route to faith, but they can also be a barrier. Some people experiencing chronic pain for example that just doesn't go away they they begin to question whether god really exists whether god really loves them and cares about them so that can be a either a barrier or, or actually a avenue that leads to faith but uh many many different different sources and so you talk about that in your book you and miss Sharman, uh all these different barriers that get in the way and as a result, when we get away from like the core teachings of Christianity, for example, it leads to a lot of trouble, doesn't it? It leads to all kinds of things because, you know, our human nature, our human drives, in many respects, are self-destructive. You know, the drives for pleasure, they destroy us because we, we, we seek these things that give us pleasure in the short term that in the long term lead to destructive outcomes in our health, in our emotional health, in our relationships. You know, it's uh, those rules within the major religious traditions and particularly Christianity are there to protect us. You know, those, you know, and when we, we depart from those things, we're on, we're, we're on our own. Mm. And we're then, you know, being on your own, anything can happen because, you know, I do think kind of that there might be an evil force out there mm -hmm. that's that has it in for us. And in, unless we have the protection from from God, we, we don't stand a chance against this force. We're, we're in a bad way. And, and so I would say most of our audience would be Christians and would be people of faith. And so as they're listening to this podcast, they may say, you know what, I, I'm cool. All is well. But really, it's very critical for them to persevere or to continue on in their faith, isn't it? And uh, we think about so many people over the, especially over the last 25 years, it looks like 15.5% of the U.S. population has stopped going to church. Uh, what is it that a person can do to continue on or persevere in their faith? Well, you know, they have to, they have to do it. They have to develop some self-discipline mm. to do this every day. If you, you don't, you, you can't skip days. You can't think that you're okay. And you don't, you stop praying or stop going to church. That, it doesn't work that way. You have to do it every day. You need a prayer time. You need every week to go to religious services and, and be with others of faith that you can encourage and they can encourage you. Uh, you know, it's it's doing anything else, departing from that pattern of private religious activity, communal activity, um, it won't last. Your faith is very fragile. Faith is a very fragile thing. It can go quickly with mm -hmm. all of the different temptations uh, in the world that are attacking you, that are coming at us from every direction, from the inside and from the outside. 
You know, we, we've got to keep it up. We've got to keep that connection with God strong. And, you know, the, the scripture says, pray unceasingly. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, <laughs> praying all the time, kind of thinking yeah. of God as much as you can most of the day, most of the time that you're awake. So that's how you maintain your faith. And it, it has dire consequences. We think of the spiritual consequences, but we're also witnessing the deaths of despair uh, that you and others have written about. I think 132 people take their life every day. So that's also a consequence of not persevering or continuing in one's faith, isn't it? Yes. Deaths of despair are deaths from alcohol, drugs, or suicide. And, you know, there there is a lot of research um, in, in by some of the best research groups in the world, published in some of the best academic journals in the world, showing that Active involvement within a religious community once a week or even more often than once a week is clearly rated is clearly related to lower levels of deaths of despair and 70 percent lower among women and nearly 50 percent lower among men. And these are studies involving tens of thousands of people who have been followed for decades looking at death rates from suicide, drugs and alcohol. And these studies, one after the other, show that the person actively engaged in a faith community with a strong faith um, is not going to is not going to die from a death of despair. They're going to they're going to live long and and they're probably going to live happily, you know. Yeah. But but you know, there life is hard. There's no doubt about it. But it live live happily within the constraints of our genetics and our developmental experiences and the traumas that we all experience in life that are hard to predict and are very different for every person. Only God knows why that happens. Yes. And, and those that it does come quicker for, you know, the pancreatic cancer types and those things, but they still have a better outcome than someone uh, that's not a uh, part of a faith community, don't they? Yeah, you know, be part of it is is because religious faith enhances our natural healing systems. Mm -hmm. And as we connect with other people and we have that stray, strength of our faith with God and pray with others and sing hymns with others, worship God with others, that actually there is evidence that that activates the immune system. So it can fight off cancer. It can fight off infections, COVID-19 yeah. better. You know, uh, yeah. if if we're part of a faith community, now I would suggest, you know, in the old days when we had to wear a mask, I yeah. would suggest wearing a mask and getting vaccinated. Yeah. But as a doctor, you know, I naturally would do that. But, uh, you know, gathering together and loving one another, that has lots of health benefits in terms of immune functioning, and that can help prevent disease and illness. We're all going to die someday, you know, but... Uh, those with faith are going to do a whole lot better in the life that we have here on earth. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing, Dr. Koenig. And I encourage all of our listeners to get a copy of Nothing More Important, a book about faith from Dr. Koenig and Miss Sharman. She's contributed in here. You'll see her contributions. And so you can get this at Amazon.com or where all good books are are bought, but uh, check that out and get your copy. Thank you. This has been wonderful. We've enjoyed getting to spend some time with you today, Dr. Koenig. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much for, for you and all that you're doing too, to spread the gospel and to increase all of our faith here in this, in this world that's sometimes life is hard. Absolutely. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. And hey, we appreciate all you, our listeners. Uh, perhaps you know someone that could benefit from this podcast. We encourage you to take it, share it with them. Remember, every little thing we do, it really does matter. And truly, we're better when we work together. We're better together. Thank you for joining us today.